Okay, so hi and welcome back to Stream of Thoughts. We apologize for the slight uh, technical problem uh, and I now give back the words to our uh, two guests, uh, Diana campbell Betancourt and Korakrit Aounon-Nunchai. Thank you. Great. So maybe we can use this uh, technical difficulty as a segue. So we were just practicing to to figure out how to use this platform. Um, and Crit, I, I told you this before, but I really love this word practice and the idea of practice in your work, like something that you're working at and working towards something that's not quite there yet. Um, and I love, I mean, music plays a big part of your life and also your work, um, ritual, you have a curatorial practice and setting up ghosts, you have artistic practice. Um, I think it could be great if maybe you could talk about how practicing in these different fields bleed into each other and influence the work. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I think, um, you know, like I, <clears throat> when when i was much younger um when i was in high school my my i remember my 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 dad asked me what i like uh when i was in high school and i was like basically applying to art school already my dad asked me what i wanted to do and i think i would like gave him some really obtuse answer like oh i want to um i i want to figure out a new like way of communicating or something, or like communication, you know? And that's like really, and, and, I, and I think the emphasis is, is like, like um, <clears throat> you know, I like, I, I, I think um, for, for me, like a lot of like the key word in my practice that I, in my practice that I uh, think a lot about is, is the kind of sort of like the in-between, right? Feel it like the gaps, the in-between, um, um, and kind of like really putting a lot of um, kind of energy and putting the practice in into into kind of like that in between space, you know, and see what what comes out of it, you know. And essentially, like I like I think I think like ritual um, art practices are sort of um, you know it's a lot of times they they escape language, they escape like single forms. You know, oftentimes, um, you know, like, 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 I, like, I, like, I think there, there's, there's something about, uh, like, I think I've said this a few times, but there, there's something about, you know, when you think about, uh, when you write mediums for uh, artwork, you know, and when you say mediums in the, in the context of spirit mediums, you know. Uh, they're kind of the same also like they like they, there's like really an overlap in meaning in terms of like like you know what when you you know like essentially um yeah like what that word medium is and mm -hmm. yeah like i like I, I think like when you were talking about like whether it's curatorial whether it's um performance whether it's a filmmaking or any like anything that i do it's it's like it's it's the same way like the the medium may like the medium may change but the sort of cloud of idea or the space that I'm trying mm -hmm. to get to and enact is it's essentially the same you know and I think the whole idea with the practice is yeah like you said it's it, there's like a kind of um there's a there's a kind of like both backwards and forwards movement but it's yeah. also like a movement to get somewhere maybe perhaps you'll never get to actually you know and i think that's like something about it yeah, yeah and i think it also plays with a, you know a non-linear view of time which we both have um maybe to get back to what you're talking about this this cloud and this medium it's also interesting to maybe think about the spaces where this work has shown um and sometimes they are tied to this ritual or like a spiritual space like right now this the work in brussels is in a deconsecrated church correct Mm -hmm. yes. yes, and I think in in performa it was also a, a former religious. It was space, in correct? it was in with also a like a like a gothic church architecture that you know a church that was turned into an event space. Yeah, like like I like I I, I think you know in in the performance I I think I I really wanted to um <clears throat> like I like like I guess there's um you know I I went to a Christian school 
and I and I always had this kind of a sort of a con- like sort of actually conflicting relationship with uh Christianity. Like I had to study. Um, I had to you know I I, I went to school in literally a church that uh was based after an upside down Noah's Ark. You know, but I always that there was something about that architecture that also felt very powerful to me and 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 that's something that came to represent order in a way mm-hmm. and then there's also mm-hmm. something about the, you know the 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 form of uh together the performance which we did together um you know that basically is trying to bring to life the ghost cinema this this sort of a more kind of a foresty showing um a movie outdoor so that spirits and people can come watch together and be possessed and you know share a story and i guess i i and and, and i guess I, I like the idea to somewhat take something take this ghost cinema itself and let it play out in um you know in in, in this church i guess you know like other yeah. than like you know in the video the yeah, like I like I think that relationship is interesting, and I think in in performa in general, and yeah, like like I think that, that there was this whole laser, um, this green laser kind of column that was made in the middle of the space, and I and I think that's kind of it, it plays with the architecture itself, you know, like like all kind of um, there's something about like temples and you know like religious architecture where they'll have a much higher ceiling like roof ratio than width you know yeah. and there's some there's always something pointing above yeah kind of like, uh, yeah. yeah and i think for me um in in this piece but also more so in the in the new piece songs were dying and i don't I, i'll send you a link soon like i like i think and in my normal sort of a uh, consciousness being this practice i i now more and more see the idea of god or collectivity like in the ground you know i think in my youth like i think it came a long time from the use of dirt in the work and especially in dhaka like we're really fortunate to make the entire stage out of clay you know and clay which like a, which almost like the entire country country of bangladesh is made from in in a way you know symbolically like clay gets melted into the river it becomes part of the water but it's also the land and yeah like like i i just think um yeah like, like god is in the ground you know and i think there, there's something special about kind of then trying to make that point in the space where there's so much from the sky and trying to make yeah. that play no, I couldn't agree with you more. And it's also in a way like you're kind of cleansing these churches because also, you know, organized religion comes with a lot of violence. But that bringing because I, I saw install shots from Brussels, you have dirt on the floor in there as well. And in the gallery space where you show this in Thailand, you also brought dirt in the floor. Um, yeah, I think it's it's an interesting way of, of kind of grounding religion back into humanity. Yeah, like I like I think. Um... <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> I mean, I, <clears throat> I think that, that there's a sort of this, uh, like I've been, I've been thinking a lot about this, this idea of uh, just to get more into <clears throat> almost like re- re- religious thinking. That there, there's this sort of um, <clears throat> the storytelling or the language around um, like gods or like animism, like things are often like based in within the space of um, yeah the the air the sky the above right and that's that's almost kind of like in the video this whole space is kind of like like in Thai political history it's you know since the cold war it's it's kind of collapsed into the space of like the monarchy you know like the mm-hmm. monarchy mm-hmm. literally is is um essentially represented by this thing called the garuda which is essentially like a bird man like essentially in christianity would be an angel um yeah. and then that's why that's why my interest in in the naga or the, the snake is I, like i like the snake like the naga is the snake which you know lives in the you know the dirty water you know like the naga represents this sort of like the naga in in chinese is essentially the dragon but it represents like 
that which cannot be seen, that which cannot be represented, or that which can sort of, in a way, escape the sky, like that you know, like mm -hmm. control or like, um, and 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 I and I think, like there there is this you know, like I I really felt this sense when I when we took that boat down the river in Dhaka, you know, like it's it does, there's like this the space of um like the space of the Naga where, you know, myth making, it's really messy. It takes a lot of, um, you know, it, it like takes a lot of unequalness, like all parts don't kind of make up like a full story, you know, like, like, I guess that's, that's, that's like, for me, that's the space where like rituals are alive and well. And for me, that's the space where, you know, yeah, the ghost tells the story and that's the space where, like I want to take the stories to kind of like in a way build my like my work out of yeah totally and maybe to go back also into that grounding and and the stories the multiple layers of stories that you're dealing with we could also talk about the grounding of those kids being trapped in the cave right like those kids were suddenly trapped into the earth but it became a story like kind of up in the air where they be suddenly became like immortal thai symbols could you maybe speak a bit more about that and the inspiration of using that in your work <clears throat> well <clears throat> i like i guess i <clears throat> I, I kind of um <clears throat> I guess <clears throat> for me when when that story came out, I I just I just saw <clears throat> there was just like so much of it, right? And you know, I, I think mm -hmm. I saw um <clears throat> I think I saw maybe like either it was a Facebook post or some kind of blog post about how it's almost like <clears throat> while the story was developing, how this is going to be the new like Thai identity to the world and Thailand as this kind of tourist <laughs> uh, kind of uh, nationalistic tourist countries are really interested in like how we are represent ourselves to 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 the like the story of Thailand in a way um, and I think I guess that that's what first pulled me into it but also the fact that like within this story. Um, <clears throat> so many people got involved, you know? Um, <clears throat> the story I'm really interested in essentially and what no history uh, in a room filled with people with funny names is very interested in is, it's, you know, during the Cold War, there's um, uh, and, and, and the kind of uh, sort of state crafting of um, the, the Thailand that I grew up in and my parents grew up in, which involves the story of, um, you know, the king, uh, Rama Nine, who's the, the last king, you know, the king is like the ruler of the country, like, you know, Thailand, like its connection with like America and the CIA and like becoming this kind of a uh, Americans kind of like, like basically a base for um, neoliberalism to kind of grow in Southeast Asia, you know, and, and just along with all these kind of influx of like, um, yeah, glo globalism and all these influence, all, all these histories actually are not told at all in, in sort of like, it's just really vague. It's like not told or recorded at all in any history books, you know? And I think that's why the video is yeah. called No History. And yeah. fortunately, like there's a lot of laws that talks about how you can really talk about that history in Thailand. So I was, so I saw a lot of parallel within, you know, the story of the kids being stuck in the cave. Like it felt like similar actors, you know, the mid Thai military, American military, um, the Christian missionaries, the, uh, you know, like Elon Musk was involved. Like, you know, like there was all <laughs> these kind of different actors, like the, the kind of organized Buddhist religion in Thailand, you know, the new king. And there were all these people kind of involved in trying to save the kids or in a way trying to reaffirm, I guess, this story about, you know, the caretaker and the care receiver or, you know, almost like the the, the, the more, I guess, powerful uh, person on top who's like taking care of their whatever, their population or their like, you know, like the followers they possess, you know. So I guess 
that's that's the whole thing like it, it takes this idea of um the ghost the host and the idea of possession to kind of uh look at really look at um the story of the kids and you know whether in this process of being rescued whether they also let had to you know let a certain kind of story like possess them you know or let themselves actually become a story and in a way by looking at this current version of this sort of whole universe of a uh, story making maybe one could also start to see like you know the the kind of crafting of the actual like the story of thailand like 70 years ago yeah mm. Oh, beautiful. And I think it's interesting also, like, I'm going to take this in a different direction, but you're talking about these kind of recurring characters that like built the story of the Thailand that you and your parents knew. But I think what's also interesting is you and your own practice kind of have a recurring cast of characters that you collaborate with yeah. over long periods of time. You guys practice together, including your um, collaborator on this yeah. piece, um, Alex uh, Vo Vo <laughs> I'm so bad with pronouncing last names. Vo uh, Gvoyage, yes, um, third time with charm. So, or also boy child, right? I think you guys have been working together for like almost eight years. Yeah, eight, maybe nine, I'm losing count of yeah, time. Yeah, the time um, doesn't mean anything. But um, I think it could be great to hear how, like, kind of you guys have influenced each other and how your story, your kind of collective storytelling has evolved, like maybe up into the point of DACA and then also now, like, you know, when, when terms of collaboration change, when our bodies can't be in the same space. Yeah. You know, I, instead of uh, characters, I, I really like this, like, I, like, I feel like Adam Curtis likes to use this uh word forces will be like this force That's that force word, yeah. you know voices yeah, yeah, yeah. you know and i was like instead of characters i was like yeah i i, I think of like and, and and in a way like <clears throat> the collaborators i've had in my life are are in a way forces like those you know those mm -hmm. like forces influence relationships um you know like i like i think <clears throat> um like boy Shao, for example in in this work um she actually so so the ghost in the ghost in or rather saying ghost but yeah the, the 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 character that is very omnipresent in this uh no history and together this this performance in this video is actually it's is the color green you know mm -hmm. and green being yeah. the green screen green being boy shout, um, you know, when she's painted green, green being the green text, green being sort of like the green laser, green being, you know, like there, there's a like green kind of, um, in the performance, green is actually the color green is the script. That's the one script mm -hmm. everyone has like pays attention to. And like, you know, it's like a good metaphor for the in-between space, I guess. Um, but, <clears throat> yeah, like so, Boy Shao essentially plays this 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 ghost, this this kind of like um, the like a you know like a manifestation of the color green that in a way performs um, you know outside of the space, like you know essentially the ghost in the ghost cinema is Boy Shao, and there's some you know in her voice, but there's something interesting about in in um, in the performance in performer, she was physically present, but you know, you see her mm -hmm. like either behind the screen or like you kind of, you don't really see her till the end. But in Dhaka, you know, of course she didn't come, but it was even yeah. more interesting where we had showed her just in the screen and you, you know, gets closer. And in the video in, um, which in Brussels, the video version, she's only in, um, <clears throat> it's almost like her force or her like, present is she, she exists completely on a different screen this is a three screen mm -hmm. installation the whole mm -hmm. my whole relationship with boy Shao is almost it's it's kind of like um i guess it's like it's it's a very it's pretty much through the space of performance in many mm -hmm. of the videos she plays the the character of the naga but it was almost as if the character like the the meaning that i gave 
you know, to the meaning that I uncovered of what the Naga meant to me. Like I also found in being an audience of Boy Chow, like in, in her own performances and in the performances we do together, you know, like I think actually there's something that I, a quality that I found in her performances, you know, that really kind of later on, like I, I came to find like, the meaning in it like or or that it it like uncovered something in my work or the way i was thinking about something you know so it's almost mm -hmm. as like uh yeah and then and then we have a most of our communication we're never really living in the same city so most of our communication exists through um is essentially like talk talking like it's always there's always a performance we do together and then when we're working on the performance we're always talking back into that space of the last performance or something you know mm -hmm. and then this it kind of builds on top of each other um yeah but pretty much i like i feel like myself like i'm uh almost like in the beginning a stage maker you know and and that and my first relationship was i i asked boy Shao to come and perform on the stage you know and somehow that performance on that stage collapsed itself into the film and then the film then became another stage for the performance and it kept building itself on top of each other in a way, you know? And I, and I think, so in a way, like for me, Boy Chow also like, in a way, her performance taught me how to perform in a way also, or to think about performances. And with Alex, I think, you know, the whole thing was, I mean, I think when I met Alex, I didn't even really kind of <laughs> knew, like, soup, like, quite new to moving image, you know? So, um, and then with Alex, it's, it's, it's more like, you know, like Alex's medium is essentially light, light and kind of like uh, light and camera and anything that has to do with cinematography and like theater and, you know, in a way he's more of a stage maker or a situation maker than I am, you know? And then so like my relationship with Alex almost become one, like one where like I'm trying to tell a story or like uh actually in the performance it was almost as if like alex became the um the dramaturg you know in oh. a way well yeah because i i can't really think in 3d space mm -hmm. in in the way that he could you know so it was almost like i had this film and then from the film or the storytelling in the video you know how does that become actions within the space through lights and bodies and i think that's what alex does you know yeah yeah absolutely i mean it was amazing to see him um it was amazing to see him in action in dhaka and again we could only rehearse for such short periods of time also because it needed to be dark there were other things happening but that kind of quick responsiveness um but i think that also in this time of the pandemic like i wish i were in brussels right now able to experience the work again but when i saw that work um in venice i saw it in thailand like because of that presence of the light it, it's something that feels far more than experience something on a screen like your body is really pulled in peace <clears throat> right like i like i think that's the whole thing about yeah even like the fog the light you know the candle all these tricks right that not these these kind of like tricks that are used you see them used in rituals you see them used in concerts but you know they they physicalize the the kind of they, they do do the thing you know like a bring bringing you there and more or something it's hard to say because they're all essentially like sheep like like i think there's something about being I, you know, I like I just watch a movie about magicians or something, and, and I think there's always mm -hmm. like within, yeah. and even like the whole thing about the ghost cinema, you know, what I mean, the, there's always yeah, yeah, yeah. a good storyteller is also like maybe like a, a good cheap mag magician or something, you know what I mean? And I think maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah totally, like, like, totally, yeah, but yeah. you don't fully reveal the trick. Um, and maybe like for, cause we're going to have to wind this down. Um, I think it's like, when I think about the DACA art summit for me, each edition is cumulative. They're not separate. So I'm sure like, you know, I would love to do something in the Swindler Buns with you for the next summit. In fact, I've been thinking a lot about the Swindler Buns recently, yeah, but yeah, how yeah. would you describe, 
let's do it. But how would you describe the relationship for people who, like me, three years ago saw no history of clearing and are now seeing um, no history five uh, at the Kunsten Festival des Arts? Like, how would you fill in, since you like these in between spaces, how would you fill in those gaps? <clears throat> um, between the last video and this this current one that's on view. Yeah, we're in a series, right? So what's uh, I guess what changed in your yeah, work? Like, 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 I guess I, yeah, like I mean, <clears throat> there's there's always there's always um there's always an an underlying sort of arc that like passes through. I think in number four. Um, essentially now, okay, that, you know, now there's one that goes after it's actually, it's almost like number six, it's not called number six, but I can say this, like there are many forces that, uh, affect play out in my work. Right. One of them's uh, clear, like my, my grandparents, you know, in the yeah. number four, it's about my grandmother going through the mentia in this current, um, uh, number five, the one showing in Brussels, you you kind of see them as an audience with you on the screen, you know. And there's this bunny rabbit that's like being sort sort of like was came out of like their lives in a way, and you know. And then in the newer one, number six, actually a lot of it, you know, my grandfather passed away. Um, oh, sorry. In this year, so oh no, it's okay. But you know, so the number six songs for dying is about you know the death triggered it for me was my grandfather but then there's also the epoch uh, the, the epoch of time that um <laughs> changes like let's say in in number four um you know it's like the like the the kind of rise of trump and then it's also like the death of the last king in you know um number five sort of about the, the moment when you know now the king is gone what is the new story and then in number six it's like about this moment of sort of the new king now in Thailand. And then another, on a, but in another like bigger grand narrative way, number four really is about, okay, this is a reset button. You know, we have to just start from breathing in and out and just start from connecting to the world through breathing again. Cause like the carpets pulled of under, under our feet and there's like, we're standing on nothing just dirt maybe mm -hmm. and then the second and, and sorry number five which is in brussels then becomes about okay how to tell a story how to start to build essentially like build up from that sort of uh that void of nothingness again how like after you breathe maybe you tell the story you know and then mm -hmm. in songs for dying it's like after you know you can tell a story but then how do you become a meet how does your perf like you know how do you become a medium to tell stories like shaman like other stories or in particular way like how do you from a story maybe it becomes a songs or a series of songs to do more yeah. than tell a story to sense yeah so there, there is a kind of a sort of you know thing. and that's totally the space i'm in right now too like you know maybe this is segues into something we we maybe one day do in the Sundarbans, but Amitav Ghosh has this yeah. amazing new book called Jungle Nama, and he talks about the verses, like in how Bengali literature, like these stories were told in verses, so they rhyme and you remember them, and that kind of power that these rhymes have, it's not a single person reading a, a page, you're actually like chanting this and becomes part of you because you're doing it together. And I think that's what's so powerful also in times of censorship or like, you know, you guys have that in Thailand, we have this in Bangladesh, other places, like you can't write whatever you want on social media, right? You can't tell stories that way. Um, or maybe stories right. will stop. I think work like yours is so important in the sense that it allows these um, ideas to transmit in ways that normal channels wouldn't. Right, yeah. yeah. Or also to time travel, like that, that what stories or, or songs or rhyming does in terms of neural pathways, how you recall and remember things. Wow. Never thought about that way, but yeah. No. Anyway, um, much more to nerd. Much, much so more to talk you. about.
Is it is yes. it time? I don't want to go over the time. But... So um, everyone, I hope you get a chance to see this installation um, at Le Brigottine for the Quinson Festival des Arts. It was a pleasure being in conversation with you as always, Crit, and looking forward to seeing part six, seven, eight, nine, or you know whatever avatar these great ideas uh, manifest in. So it's a pleasure. It's so nice. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye.